I'm about to turn 32, and I have to admit that I'm not even close to being in the shape that I'd like to be. And I often have breakfast at the cafe as well as lunch, and you know how lame it is to ditch lunch with your coworkers. I work late, so I often order takeout, and of course, I never get a healthy salad. I signed up for the gym a while ago, and I was going too, pretty consistently, but ever since COVID hit, well, I know what you're thinking, just work out at home or go running in the park. And you're right, but come on, let's not beat around the bush. It's a matter of motivation. I also started to follow some fitness gurus on Instagram, just to be motivated to do something. And obviously, if I had a Lambo like that, I would be happy to go to the gym. Let's be clear, you don't just make a wish and then a huracan appears outside your house. I've actually been invited by Lamborghini to its gym in Santa Agata Bolognese for a training session. And due to the current COVID situation, traveling can be a little unsafe, so they mercifully gave me a vehicle to get there. I think it's the first time that anyone, in this case me, is so happy that the gym is this far from home. Now you're probably wondering why I'm traveling 250 miles just to go work out. And it's because I'm not going to just any ordinary gym. Instead, this is the fitness center where Lamborghini's factory drivers train themselves. In fact, I'm going to do exactly what they usually do for a full morning. I've got to admit, I thought that practicing on a racetrack was enough for a driver, but that's just not true. Lamborghini explained that physical preparation like this is fundamental. Let's put it this way just to simplify. A fit body is a body that resists the fatigue of racing longer, but that's not all. Drivers must keep concentration for hours, and that's something that I definitely don't have. I'm going to show you two exercises, one related to the interaction between the hip, the heart, and the waist. This one's very important because drivers need to have that sensitivity. The other one is a workout for balance, concentration, coordination, and mental work. We use these special glasses that turn on and off, intended to reinforce the optic nerve by simulating rain or bad visibility. Drivers always have to be multitasked. To be honest, I'm pretty worn out just with the warm-up, but the best has yet to come. A training schedule like this starts with an analysis of what we need to strengthen, highlighting parts that present an imbalance that we have to correct. Because even if the racers are only driving, they need to be able to handle the training too. For example, if during the training session they run poorly, they can hurt themselves, and this is going to affect their driving performance. The amazing thing is that they use high-tech tools to find those vulnerabilities. We use these technologies first to see the overall situation and to understand the starting point. A treadmill with developed sensors grades joint movements and highlights asymmetries, then compares all of this data to the average of the population. Meanwhile, a unique footboard makes notes of balance, springiness, gait, flexibility, and many other things.
Lorenzo, here's your specific training program as a driver or crew member or something. We've said that upper body strength is something that requires more work. Then general exercise reinforces the balance and lower body. These glasses turn on and off, and I have to catch the balls, or better yet, I have to catch the balls and maintain balance. It's very hard, we have to work out a bit on the recovery. Are you having fun? Yes, I am. It seems much easier. This is a huge undertaking, especially for me since I'm out of shape. On the other hand, drivers really are complete athletes. They take care of their body, including proper nutrition and sleep. They work out their minds to support long periods of stress without losing concentration. Something that they told me at the driver's lab that really impressed me is this. These guys must be trained to keep up with the car, which, unlike the driver, never really gets tired. And now it's time for the cryo sauna, and because the torture never ends, I get to sit in negative 166 degrees Fahrenheit for about two minutes. I'm joking, because in all honesty, the cryotherapy is actually a very unusual experience. You immediately feel all of the benefits. The cold helps to stimulate cell regeneration, and once you leave the chamber to recover from the heat shock response, your heart starts pumping blood like there's no tomorrow toward all the blood vessels in your body, even the peripheral ones. It helps to reduce inflammation and pain, and after seeing these images, again, I think maybe cryotherapy also reduces something else, my professional dignity. I'm not really a treat to the eyes, as you can see. Have we finished? Yes, we have. We've finished! I didn't come out completely transformed, did I? No, I definitely wouldn't say so. But I've still learned something from this experience. It's all a matter of concentration, in racing and sports in general, honestly. But also at work, at school, or in any field you want to improve, you need to identify little goals, little things that you can work toward and achieve. You have to be concentrated on that gradual progress and renew it again and again and again. Don't rush too much and don't expect everything immediately, otherwise you risk getting hurt and losing out. The real key is to combine concentration with consistency. You have to find something that keeps you motivated, even when you're about to give up. In my case, I already know that it won't always be easy, but apart from that, I can't count on a new Lamborghini every time I have to do some exercise, am I right?